Big 12 and wide receiver, it's a match made in heaven. This league always produces great skilled players on the outside, slot receivers who can really find the hole and make great catches. We bring in Melissa Trebowasser of Frogs of War. We've got Hunter Cook of Viva the Matador, both from SB Nation, to talk up the top five in the conference. And this could take some doing because there's a long list of really productive players coming back to the Big 12. And I, I'm going to be interested in going to Melissa first to see how much of a homer she plays with the kind of talent she's got at TCU versus the kind of talent they have at Baylor. So, Melissa, let's see what you got. Okay, well, I'm going to definitely be a homer here on number one because I refuse to start another list with a Baylor player and go with my boy Josh Doxson at the number one spot. Uh, senior coming back, had a little bit of an injury issue last year, but he does everything. He's got speed. He's got the ability to break away. He points the ball high, uh, gets into the end zone, ridiculous catch radius. Uh, that that one-handed touchdown catch he had against Minnesota is one of my favorite plays I've ever seen at PCU. Um, and he's strong. He can break tackles and get into the open field, runs great routes. I think he's the best receiver in the conference. That's definitely debatable, but I'm getting to make the list, so he's my number one. Uh, right behind him in a close second is Corey Coleman out of Baylor. And Baylor just has just an absolute slew of wide receivers that can do everything. He's a guy that's a burner, but is also physically strong, has good size, great, great hands. Um, guy you have game plan against and commands a lot of double teams. Uh, I'm going to go with Sterling Shepard at number three from Oklahoma. Uh, good experience. Again, if he hadn't gotten hurt and they had a quarterback worth their salt first half of the season. I think he would have put up a lot better numbers, but just has been a good, reliable target for a long time in the Crimson and Cream. I'm going to throw, throw a bone here to, to my friend with Jakeem Grant at number four. Uh, I think he's, I mean, he's great. And, it, you know, if Tech, again, had the same kind of quarterback issues last year that Oklahoma had, but he's a guy that uh, can really do a lot of things no matter who's throwing in the rock, and I think he'll have a very productive season once they kind of get their quarterback situation squared away. Uh, number five, I'm going to throw a little wrench in here. I'm going to I'm going to give the Cyclones something and go with Alan Lazard. There may not be a more physically gifted receiver in the conference. There might be not be a a bigger surprise signing for Iowa State than he was um, as a freshman a year ago. But coming back his sophomore year, I think they finally have some of their center issues or uh, quarterback issues resolved a little bit too. He's going to have a good season. Uh, and I'm going to totally cheat, and I'm going to throw in, in their own separate category, my two favorite receivers in the conference, Katie Cannon out of Baylor, who is just a blur, and TCU's version of the blur, Colby Listenby. Last year, he was a guy that it was just throw it real long, let him run under it, and nobody can keep up with him. He may be the fastest player in college football. I mean, this is a this is a guy who is running for Big 12 championships in track this year and running, running for NCAA championships in the, the 100 meters. He is just fast. Um, but what he's really worked on this spring and this offseason has been his route running. So if he adds the ability to, to run a route in addition to just running a fly pattern, he could end up being uh, just an absolute unstoppable weapon. Couple him with Dawson on the other side, Deontay Gray in the middle, We've got Ty Slanina. We've got six freshman wide receivers, some of whom are bound to see playing time. It, it It's going to be fun to watch them just chuck it. Yeah, and when we see some of these games in the 50s and 60s in the Big 12, we know that the offensive skill players are really good, but sometimes we look at the defenses and think not so good. But then the two best teams in the conference go to bowl competition, and even though Baylor lost with some mistakes late against Michigan State, they really tore it up through the air, and it was difficult for the Spartans to keep up with Baylor. And then, of course, TCU really ran rough shot over Ole Miss and the Rebels and all that speed in the secondary, and what was considered by many to be college football's best secondary couldn't keep up with the likes of Doxon and Liston B. All right, Hunter. Uh, we got a top seven of sorts from Melissa, but a, a strong top five, definitely, and then two faves onto the side. So what do you have for us? Well, here we go. <laughs> this is going to be the last video I make with you, Mark, because I'm going to be crucified for this opinion among uh, my friends. I do not have a Texas Tech receiver in our top five. I just think we haven't proved anything yet. A lot of inconsistency there. But anyways, moving on. Uh, number one, KD Cannon out of Baylor. I don't think I have seen anyone besides Alan Lazard who is as physically impressive as KD Cannon. And you see, like Melissa said, he's fast. He's a, he can get like literally anywhere, make any catch in a short amount of time. He can take screens to the house. He can beat you deep. He can beat you over the middle. He can beat you to the edge. 
he can beat you by himself. Not literally by himself, but eh, more or less. Uh, number two, Josh Doxson out of TCU. Same reasons as KD Cannon. Physically imposing, fast, catches everything. Uh, Melissa kind of stole my thunder with Alan Lazard. I have him at three. I believe that he is, if he was on a different team that isn't named Kansas, I think everyone would know more of who he is. Man, this dude is an absolute freak with the ball in his hands. Really, really, really good after contact. Uh, number four, Colby Listenby out of TCU. Like Melissa said, fast. A lot of speed. I guess I like speed on this list. Uh, five, Sterling Shepard out of Oklahoma. If there's anyone who is a model of consistency, it's Sterling Shepard and just Oklahoma receivers in general. They always seem to be a little bit more or a little bit less uh, size, have a little bit less size. God, I can't talk today. Have a little bit less size, but they always seem to make clutch catches. They always seem to move well with the ball in their hands, and they always seem to block at least a little bit better than average. And that's why Sterling Shepard makes this list instead of a Texas Tech receiver is because Sterling Shepard can block his freaking butt off, and he's very, very good at what he does. You uh, Big 12 powers and even some of the mid-tier teams, you just like to interchange Iowa State, Kansas. It just doesn't matter. You just kind of throw them around, so it doesn't matter. Lazard, Iowa, State, Kansas, you, you just kind of throw it around, don't you, Hunter? Uh, one of these days, maybe those one mm -hmm. of those two will rise up. And, of course, Kansas did, what, seven, eight years ago. had a pretty good run for a couple years. So yeah, I'm going one. to point out a couple other players that we could consider. And... Uh, I, I love both of you going with Lazard in the top five as a true freshman, uh, catching for like 19 yards per catch, three touchdowns, and again, who knows what those numbers would be in a functional offense with a really good quarterback. Um, Brandon Shepard, the other Shepard out of Oklahoma State, had a really big freshman season. He caught 39 passes, five touchdowns, had a huge game in Bedlam, seven catches for 156 and two touchdowns as Oklahoma State pulled off the upset there. If he builds the rapport with Mason Rudolph, that could be a really good situation there as he caught 12 in the last two games with Rudolph at quarterback. Uh, Texas is going to rely a lot on Armonte Foreman, who was a five-star a couple years ago. If they can just get him the football, he had 10 catches and two touchdowns last year. Uh, Devin Lauderdale, a player coming back for Texas Tech, caught 31 passes last year. 18 yards per reception. Uh, Dykel Shorts, West Virginia, had two extremely good receivers, including, of course, Kevin White last season. Uh, so they're going to replace uh, those two wideouts with uh, Dykel Shorts. Jordan Thompson had a nice year for West Virginia as well. 49 catches, 578 yardage, and two touchdowns. So receivers all over the place in this league. I think your top five list, I cannot shoot holes. Uh, uh, I think those players have definitely distinguished themselves from the next level guys that I point out who uh, just kind of got their feet wet and show us some playmaking ability. But out of those guys, uh, don't, ex don't uh, be surprised if some of them emerge as uh, some of the top talent uh, and, and vying for all conference honors uh, this season. So good list from Melissa and also you, Hunter. Appreciate the time and uh, the insight. Big 12 wideouts. It should be fun to watch this year. Always will be.